So I'm, I'm very grateful that to, uh, the Franz, uh, Fondazione Franceschini, and particularly to Lino Leonardi, for involving me in this cost action medieval cultures on the web. Uh, it's funny for an Italian to have to speak English in Italy, but I, I will comply with this clause of the uh, contract, so to say. And nevertheless, since my English phrasing and pron pronunciation is so bad, I trust uh, in your philological uh, abilities to understand what I mean and beg uh, our president of the session uh, to help translate in your question after the, the talk uh, if needed. I hope you, you will be interested in the content more than in the medium, whatever McLuhan was thinking about that. The same about content and medium would I say about the digitization of the manuscripts, what we are talking about today. As a philologist and historian of the medieval Latin literature, I am actually joining uh, another workshop of this project, uh, the third, specifically devoted to the corpora linguistics, uh, a subject on which I am working during the last years. Therefore, here inside the workshop on manuscripts, my contribute can just refer to the content of the manuscripts, that is, from my point of view, to the digital processing of medieval texts. In the era uh, of ebook uh, and e journal, interest in the application of in information technology to philology has greatly increased and now uh, threatens to change the way we conceive the philological edition of historical texts. Only a few years ago, the discussion in major philological meetings was on whether to admit and accept or to reject and delay such a process. Now the debate is only on how to manage it and how to avoid being overwhelmed or excluded by it. Less than 15 years after Charles Forever pioneering a 99 article in Romance Philology, who in a way inaugurated the discussion, uh, though it has become fashionable to back that, the forerunners, uh, the 2004 Blackwell Companion to Digital Humanities, uh, with some chapters on philological aspects, uh, marked a kind of institutionalization of the field, showing that the question has been definitively accepted as a standard issue. Uh, following an Arezzo in 2006 conference, Digital Theology and Medieval Texts, where about uh, 150 people met, among them many top specialists of this field, many other events have been and are organized. Needless to recall that many Europeans, uh, program, European programs, among them at, at, at least three uh, COS and ESF actions, are entirely or partially devoted to digital editions and to their relations with the manuscripts. Our medieval cultures on the web, inter-edition, uh, COMST, Comparative Oriental Manuscript Studies. Uh, Besides that, one HERA project is consecrated to the dynamics of medieval manuscripts uh, and in April a uh, further workshop on methods and means for digital analysis of ancient and medieval texts and manuscripts uh, is planned in Brussels. Um, as far as I can judge, uh, some of the main issues of the moment are the race towards or uh, uh, against uh, an encoding standard or multiple encoding, encoding standards, the search for tools that can automate encoding and for a software that analyzes and detects text authorship, a policy to maintain databases and websites when financing, financing has run out or the team which produced it has moved on, and a way to conciliate proprietary software or publisher contents with public rights and public uh, fa facilities. In the sphere of medieval studies, experiments with digital philology, by which I mean the production of critical editions with tools, media and criteria of computerized uh, data processing, are confusedly flourishing. A feature of such fervent activity lies just in the uh, relative easy with which it can be accessed. The result is in fact a tumultuous, fragmentary, asymmetric and inconstant evolution. 
Notwithstanding the theoretical openness and speed of web communications, many, many similar or sometimes twin initiatives uh, we have uh, um, listened to, to that. We have, uh, we have known that uh, even in the uh, in the talks of the last speaker um, proceed quietly in a parallel way without mutual contact. Just to allow each research team to keep on to keep its own project alive, we expect that this cost action will help overcoming this problem. In order to improve the level of reciprocal information, internet reference sites have been developed, such as that of uh, Patrick Zale at Köln or Ars Edendi in Stockholm, and many others. Mailing lists have been opened with hundreds of registered users. Uh, uh, for example, digital medievalists in London, but none of them is consulted enough nor has reached a re uh, reference status. Certainly, some projects of digital edition presented the uh, ipso facto as models uh, because of uh, uh, their dimension, timeliness, uh, and or quality uh, don't escape general attention even beyond their disciplinary field. One example is uh, uh, Kevin Kiernan, 92 uh, Electronic Beowulf, by now considered to be a fundamental work in terms of digital philology as the first successful experiment of a comp compact and coherent text image edition, and also for Germanic philology in itself. It bestowed on the editor, as, in, uh, so to say, a star status, uh, and gave rise to emulative projects such, uh, such as the Vercelli book edited by Rosselli del Turco and other unique codex of uh, unignorable importance uh, in the history of Anglo-Saxon literature or, um, or the facsimile edition of the Sangallo codex, uh, San, uh, Sangallen codex of the Nibelungenlied edited by Michael Stolz who later worked successfully on the new electronic Parsifal. Parsifal. The Pierce Plowman Electronic Archive by the University of Virginia finished on the web in 2005, but still producing CD-ROMs uh, on the single manuscripts uh, is uh, also a significant example of a self-defined hypermedia textual archive. In the same sector, Peter Robinson editions, Peter Robinson's editions have broken new ground he has dedicated himself to Chaucer and Dante, whose digital Divina Commedia has been newly published by Sismel, and is now working on uh, a text of minor relief, uh, that is the Greek New Testament. Other projects uh, exploit Robinson tools without being attributed to him. In, in 2009 2011, two new editions of medieval texts appeared, uh, edited by British teams, the um, Holishan uh, Chronicles that allows comparison between different um, versions of the same text uh, through the TI Comparator tool and the Chronicles of Jean Froissart, one of the best projects achieved till now, which delivers complete or partial transcription of, of all uh, 113 sur surviving manuscripts uh, uh, of the first three books uh, and high resolution, resolution uh, reproduction of eight manuscripts linked with the relevant transcription. As for Roman studies, we cannot but mention also, also the pioneering La Charrette Projet, uh, originated at Princeton and now maintained by Baylor University in Texas and Poitiers in France. The glorious Spanish anthology Admit uh, achieved in 1992 with hundreds of Spanish manuscripts and texts up until the 16th century. Many other projects would deserve to be mentioned. Some of them are anyway known uh, to the professionals, so to say. Some others are obscured because they are based on non-English speaking countries and don't surface to the visibility of the international debate. Just last November, I have, the, I have had the chance uh, to take part in a conference uh, at the University of Deusto in Bilbao 
where, uh, where I have been, been acquainted with many advanced projects uh, or even many remarkable ach uh, achievements uh, that are not much advertised in our world. Therefore, uh, this, a decision has been made to found the Spanish Society for Digital Editions, uh, just like the year before a French-Italian similar society has been launched called Humanistica, and then Italian one uh, was born called the Associazione Informatica, di Informatica Humanistica e Cultura Digitale. In the field I am most engaged in and uh, hopefully informed, that is medieval Latin literature, digital texts are fortunately and precociously, and um, it is still Lancelot, uh, precociously present in many collections, and all of us consult them by now on a daily basis, the Patrologia Latina database the electronic corpus Christianorum, the site of the Archivio della Latinità Italiana del Medioevo, the Biblioteca Augustana, the Electronic Monumenta Germana Historica, Intratext, or Poeti d'Italia in Lingua Latina, and so on. But none of them presents texts linked with the pertinent manuscripts, and very few are editions that we can define critical digital editions. On this level, Giovanni Maggioni initiated uh, in 2003 a, a very advanced experiment on his site about Jacopo da Varazzi called uh, uh, Philology Org and now turned off, uh, where he posted some examples of sensitive stemma and multi version editions, but he came to a, to a halt after some years. Instead, some complete critical editions. Um, of medieval Latin and humanistic, uh, these uh, are some pages of the lost uh, website of Maggioni. Uh, some complete critical editions of medieval Latin and humanistic texts can be found on the internet, including the Plantus of William Longsword, some texts of the Anthology of the Artus Dictandi of Stephen White, the Bayeux Tapestry, if we consider it also a text, the electoral treatises of Raimundus Lullus, uh, the Tractatus de Captione Urbis Brandeburg of Henry of uh, Antwerp, the, the De Omens Dignitate of Pico della Mirandola, and, and some others. Part of texts in progress also have circulated, especially around 2006-07, such as the Panormia of Ivo of Chartres, the De Interpretazione of Nocter Labio, we have seen some, some slides, the Canonistic Anthologies of Benedictus Levita. On 2006 also the much-awaited editions edition of Dante's uh, Monarchia came out on CD-ROM, edited by Peter Robinson, but uh, to my opinion the application Anastasia, the same adopted for the edition of the Commedia, still raises some problems on Windows platforms and shows, as far as I can judge, uh, a certain instability. Whereas uh, his previous creation, the software Collate, is brilliantly utilized by the Cancioneros project and the uh, online for sale. Each of these editions presents different designs depending on different philological choices uh, or a different organization of materials. Uh, generally speaking, as it happens in times of transition and changing media and canons, we can see a uh, wide effort to gather the cultural data of the ending epoch and save the fundamentals by focusing on, so to say, hyper-classics, uh, such as Cartier de Troyes, Dante, Boccaccio, Nibelungli, Beowulf and uh, Piers Plowman, to be secured to the new digital world. In the computing sphere, this means a much more marked interest in creating a digital interface for making available on a display already existing data, uh, as we have seen, as we have, uh, seen in, uh, before, then in the production of new critical texts in an electronic format. Many important results 
uh, those in which the specific difference of the digital edition is especially visible have been achieved, uh, achieved in cases where the relationship between the manuscripts and the publishers, published text uh, is uh, one to one, either because the codex is unique or because the edition proceeds manuscript to manuscript. In this area, one has been able to open a productive dialogue between digital philology of the text and digital philology of the documents, or, ra or rather, the application of data processing to, do to document conservation and archival science. The projects on the public documents on PASAO, the Fontes Civitatis Ratis Ponensis, of the University of Graz, the Anglo-Saxon Charters of the Centre for Computing and Humanities in London, the Liber Matricule of Ber Vercelli, the, the editions of French administrative re registers at the Ecole of the Sharp, and the Fondo Medici of Antil Principato at the National Archive in Florence, that was already achieved in 2001, the Diplomata Belgica, the medieval Norwegian text corpus, Menotech, the Moscovitica Rutenica in the Latvian State Historical Archives of Riga, and so on. A standard project in, in Italy that is very significant from the technical and the quantitative point of view is the Codice Diplomatico della Lombardia, directed by Michele Anzani, which, however, doesn't publish the reproductions of the documents. Last, last year, a digital diplomatics conference was held in Naples, updating the situation in the, this field. In this occasion, a recurrent remark has been made that contrasted the impressive accumulation of databases all over Europe that we, that we touch here and the scarcity of their exploitation that is the lack of researches carried out on the same databases. This is maybe one of the main problem, problems of the big uh, drive towards database and repertoires that Francesco Santi was talking about just yesterday. We all make la 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 laborious efforts to project finance and achieve every kind of repertories uh, of uh, databases, but the mainstream of philological research carries on without consulting them, and their existence seems to generate something like a new but marginal subfield of philology. Anyway, the digital editions of documents is gra uh, gradually and automatically developing a kind of standard which marks the image of the document uh, in order to render it parallel to the text and sensible to the mouse and presents the textual, historical, bibli bibliographical and iconographic information about the work interconnecting the historical data such as names or so. Many edition or uh, of literary test are very close to the techniques of diplomatic editions, like the above mentioned electronic Beowulf, the Ver Vercelli book admitted, and in Italy Boccaccio's uh, Zibaldone Laurenziano, uh, that unfortunately stopped at the starting version, developed in Rome by the uh, group of uh, Raul Mordenti, who exploited the manuscript-oriented research, insisting firmly on specifically graphic, codicological, paleographical and iconographical data of the source as an author's creation in which the material element takes uh, on philological relevance. This kind of edition is even finding the graphic standard uh, requirements that have been efficaciously represented by Roberto Rosselli del Turco's brand new article after the editing is done in the 2011 issue of Digital Medievalist. This development in techniques and projects based on uh, unique or singularly taken witnesses has been more or less happily bound to the drought of the movement launched in 1989 by praise of the variant. In this small volume, as you all remember, 
the Romanist Bernard Cerchini highlighted the limits and the drawbacks of traditional critical editions and re-evaluated the philology of the single manuscript, or better said, the philology of, of every single manuscript, as the best method capable of reaching the mobility move-ons of a medieval text. Although I could criticize it, Cerchini um, Sorry. has uh, evidently struck a note that still reverberates in medieval studies across the world since for over 15 years has been generating anthologies, conferences and colloquia from Germany to France, from the United States to Holland and Canada. This debate has favored the coagulation of a methodology self-defined as new philology or neue philologie, which basing itself on a mobile fluid unfestered uh, text proposes uh, a philology that would better correspond to the real conditions uh, of fruition and transmission of the works by freeing itself from the idea of the stable author, author and text uh, inherited from neoclassical and romantic culture. In most recent years the concept of the unsteady text, the first study in uh, an American anthology in uh, 1997, introduced by Stephen Nichols, has become diffused and scholars have begun speaking for or against an old or new and new philology. This tendency casts doubts on some habits of traditional philology, such as the greater value attached to the reconstruction of the uh, postulated archetype than to the physical testimonies of the text, which the Lachmanian method risks to reduce to mere careers of variants. New philology tends to present this physical example as objects worthy of studying in themselves because they represent an anonymous cult, uh, autonomous sorry, cultural project in conjunction with the social environment which requested them and produced them with the audience that expected them and which effectively uh, read them with the scribes and then compiler system of expression and so on. This position of this new philology that were in some way anticipated in Germany, as Albert Klassen has showed in a review, as well as in Italy by Avalle, Segre and others, have been received in a critical manner in Europe and especially in Italy, but also in the USA, as Rupert Pickens demonstrated in the volume The Future of the Middle, of the Middle Age edited by William Payton. They have, however, been found in a singular and probably not entirely casual consonance with the important push towards historical edition, that is diplomatic, that we have seen flourish almost everywhere on the impulse of the historical research that dominates in the world of medieval studies. From our point of view, the question that arises is whether a preferential relationship exists between the digital critical edition and this philological approach. In fact, Serpini and Witte, or Yuti as uh, they pronounce in Princeton, with him, recognizing in the computer, albeit occidentally and at, time in which, and at a time in which it could have only be a dream, a privileged uh, instrument for the real, uh, realization of the new philological approach. But he did not follow through with the idea at all. On the contrary, in the 90s, one of the criticisms uh, leveled by his the detractors was precisely the lack of a technology suitable to the objectives indicated by Sir Kegini. Now, his direct and indirect, or even unconscious, supporters find themselves in the condition of being able to make his prediction come true and of verifying its usefulness, but above all, of recording its convergence with paths that medieval theology as a whole is autonomously taking. Following this line of argument, one of the point of, points of interest is the relation between digital philology and the reconstruction of an original text or archetype. One often hears people say that digital edition would or must renounce this kind of reconstruction. 
This sometimes, ha uh, sometimes happens, uh, especially in the field of Romance or Germanic philology, but not as a consequence of the adoption of computerized instruments and methods, rather, rather as a consequence of the philological methods uh, that are dominant in Romance and Germanic philology, even in the realm of printed book editions. But this is not the only possible path, nor is, is it the most adequate for digital representation. Uh, the Corpus Ritmorum Musicum, which I have the chance to coordinate, makes it possible to display both kinds of edition, and the same is true in a quite different environment for Dante's Commedia, edited by Prusso and moved to digital by Peter Robinson. This is, a, so, so to say, a traditional edition that is text, a text reconstructed on the basis of the most plausible agreement between several witnesses, transferred to a digital environment and medium. On the contrary, the new aspects that the digital editions are introducing that can have consequences on the philological method are obviously connected to the technical potential of the tools, which is possible to summarize in the four points that we find in any handbook of computing humanities, the possibility of managing quantities of data that are not publishable in book form, the possibility of making connections between data with a speed, precision and complexity inachievable by one or more books, the possibility of interaction with the scientific community in time, the scholarly community in times and extensions that a book does not allow for, the possibility of including non-textual data, quantity, interrationality, interoperability and multimediality. I will focus here just on the, on the first point, quantity. The theoretical availability of materials related to the entire tradition of a text, specifically transcriptions, and even reproduction of every manuscript and every printing, produces two relevant effects. It includes in the philologist's sphere of observation phenomena that in the enormous majority of traditional editions are excluded or overlooked. At the same time, related to this change, it renders increasingly, increasingly unacceptable editions founded on the, philologist, on the philologist's choices that are not immediately verifiable by the researcher. The opportunity and the need to stop over each single piece of evidence broadens the sphere of investigation to elements of the manuscript sources like punctuation, graphic variants, uh, the misampage, strophe dis the distinction, markers of the textual subdivisions, glosses and interlinear remarks, which today one tends to value much more than in the past, some some sometimes for purposes which are beyond philological restoration. Researches on the language of the transcriptions, strategies of communication, first reception, reception of the text, kinds of the original or medieval performance of the text. This uh, procedure, unrealizable in print editions, seems to fulfill the ideal prospects indicated by philologists of an absolutely traditional methodology. The Italianist Domenico De Robertis, editor of uh, Dante's Rime, claims that a good critical edition is only that which furnishes the reader with all of the useful documentation necessary to evaluate it and to induce the production of another, perhaps different, edition that is nevertheless based on the same materials. The quantitative availability of the computerized medium tends, that is, to reduce the margins of choice that the limits of print render inevitable and therefore tolerable. The availability of space offered by the digital edition introduced, therefore, a premise of verifiability of choices as a condition of scientific reliability, never attempted before. But we can, cannot avoid remarking on the fact that this, it shifts the focus of the edition towards the material sources and therefore risks unbalancing the structure of the edition itself and the organization and funding of the various, various editorial tasks. 
I will skip some remarks uh, about uh, uh, interrationality and interoperability. So the digital choice, uh, of course, raises also new problems. Uh, computerization, in fact, offers all its advantages at the price of a generous employment of resources and energies and the, of the acquisition and constant updating of skills that are distinct from those of philology but not no less complex. The high number of data that the digital edition can furnish with the greater fa facility, completeness and legibility compared to the print edition must nevertheless be acquired before all by organizing, reading and collating materials similarly to the print edition. In a second phase, one must add to this operation the burden of digitization and in many cases the lab labor of transferring the data into a, stru a structured archiving program or worse, the horror of the marking by SGML, XML, TI or other code uh, all of which alienates the majority of philologists who cannot accept the huge waste of time required. And yet, a digital edition seems rarely conceivable without the encoding of the data. On the one hand, it creates a need for go-between technicians to substitute the specialized editors in the publishing houses. On the other, it creates a new standard for the critical edition, notably higher in quality and quantity of required work, against which print editions will inevitably be measured. The latter will continue to proliferate as a more accessible and convenient outlet, uh, founded on more familiar techniques. Uh, they themselves will gradually specialize, I think, on text for which the digital edition brings no substantial advantage. Perhaps following the dis distinction made by Roger Laufer, Roger Laufer uh, be between text à lire and document, uh, document à consulter, on the methodological point of view, I see the diffusion of the encoded edition as another not enough considered consequence of the influence of the archival model on the philological enterprises. XMLTI encoding, in fact, is the most popular model adopted by editors of the documents from individual sources. And we all can't avoid failing a kind of push of some communities towards the choice of TI as an unavoidable standard. TI's advantage is its so-called portability from and towards any operating system and their relative durability, the, its sharing uh, between a large community of uh, scholars. The drawbacks are its scant adaptability to complex text or multiple witness transmissions and the unfriendly face of the markup which almost no philologist will ever accept to learn, although I am a, a, a little bit uh, pro provocative, I'm sorry, although uh, now tools like the T-Pen software of the St. Louis University or Test Grid in Göttingen try to make it e easier. It's not just a question of trend and standards, it's a question of complexity. Encoding systems have not yet developed grammars sophisticated enough to embrace all or at least most of the requirements of a real critical edition that would include parallel versions, manuscripts variant, reduced or extended version, glosses, intertext, morphological remarks, syntactic remarks, semantics remarks, paleographical data, musical, metrical, historical facts, relations among the witnesses, references and so on. For such, for such an edition, the only on one of the best digital way uh, that the economic pressure towards updating the tools at any cost lets appear old-fashioned remains the database edition whose advantage is that the editor can avoid tagging and can present a link different uh, and link different series of data. The drawback is that uh, every project has to develop its its own software and interface, while the XML encoding allows an, any text to be moved and reused in a new site. This is the choice we have made five years ago for our corpus uh, rerittorum. 
the corpus of earliest Latin rhythmical poem set to music, a kind of poem whose uh, original song nature this edition aims to recover. We are convinced that this genre of poetry represents a literary level of a semi-folk poetry that arose often outside schools, uh, probably through rhythmical versification of prose, and that the presence of music served in some way to select the examples that were best able to represent the codes that the new poetic communication required. The edition's first issue, which concerns the earliest rhythmical poems set to music transmitted in non-liturgical manuscripts, uh, was uh, achieved in 2007 in Book and Sidiron, and a new improved version with new texts is being put online in a website of the University of Siena and Bergamo. This first selection, selection brings together 28 text, tran uh, texts transmitted and music transmitted in 80 manuscripts that create a kind of anthology of the best religious and non-liturgical profane poetry of the latter sensu Carolingian period. The next issue will firstly concern computistic poems, that is the rhythmical calendars, of which many musical versions have been discovered by the research team, then the rhythmical, rhythmical hymns set to music. The edition which has emerged, that for some text is the very first, and for all the text is the first, which is both textual and musical, also comes in a digital version. This is firstly because no reconstructive philology exists in the field of antique music. The musical edition is always an interpretation of the scribal version and therefore imposes the transcription of each single manuscript. Secondly, the execution of the modern transcriptions of these ancient notation, notations can be enjoyed only on a multimedia instrument. Since it was both possible and necessary to use a digital support, and a supplying um, uh, and a specially created computer environment, we took the opportunity of exploiting the chance of supplying the user, user uh, with a total reproduction um, both a photographic and textual. This is the ed edition with the, uh, the apparatus uh, uh, for each strophe and uh, the introduction with uh, uh, what we call a uh, sensible, clickable, <laughs> sensible stemma where any uh, signal uh, let appear the uh, relevant uh, version um, a metrical and linguistic uh, uh, linguistical um, filing of every uh, phenomenon and the uh, reproduction of every, of every uh, manuscript manuscript with the uh, with its uh, transcription here uh, both in uh, uh, with critical signs or without it, without them, uh, information about the manuscripts and uh, a musical ed edition made by uh, Sam Barrett of the Cambridge University with a transcription in so called alphanumeric transcription of the news. Uh, news that uh, have, have been uh, transcribed in, uh, in many different ways, uh, that is the, uh, draw, the uh, drawing from the manuscript, that is the alphanumeric transcription, and here there are the uh, transcription on stave and uh, the pertinent uh, ex execution uh, sung. Uh, of, uh, of, of course, this uh, performance uh, refers to the transcription on stage, that is, on the uh, historical modern transcription, not on the uh, medieval transcription. In this way, the corpus uh, proposes a type uh, of uh, um, open 
edition, and concluding in a few minutes, offering a critical collection of material capable of being reused in different scientific projects. In fact, the corpus included all the texts of version as autonomous entities, furnishing a reproduction of the read manuscript sources and associating it with the manuscripts, musical and sound version of the relative historical transcription. Every version of the text can be consulted, uh, whether verbal or musical, enabling, enabling its comparison with the original manuscript document. Um, a model has therefore been constructed in which, beside the reconstruction by the editor, this is uh, a reconstructed test based on the stemma you have seen, where the rejected or alternative readings appear in form of variants, the text is also readable in the real attested versions on manuscript documents in their autonomous entirety. This process, while not losing the perception of the entire tradition, goes beyond the distinction between a text reconstructed by the editor and the many transmitted texts, usually shattered, misrepresented and left unrecognizable in the apparatus of the variants. The programming of specific uh, software has allowed um, cataloging of the text on the basis of their metrical and linguistic characteristics in addition to their musical and theological aspects. Thus, the metrical and linguistic or historical data are cross-referenced for consultation. Um, <coughs> through this uh, uh, search uh, program. Researchers can select, for example, the 7th century Burgundy text in rhythmical septenaries, or the EI exchanges in the 9th century text, or the musical type associated with a certain metrical schema or literary topic, or the association between a particular lay uh, layout and a certain type of text. The project's completion has entailed the drawing up of transcription norms for both the text and the music, which are computer readable, and has boosted the research into new systems of linguistic and magical description. Interest in the musical edition of the text historical forms has also led to the inclusion of the transcription of the melody on staff, as interpreted in the past by scholars such as Pusmacher, Cecini Vecchi, and so on. Every data stored in this uh, database edition can be searched through a query, query program that produces also concordances uh, both from the transcription and from the edition. So the philological approach of the corpus and of its software aims indeed to recover the plurality of the text forms, their linguistic forms and their musical dimension, thus nearing the original orality and original qualities of the performance, features that a printed edition is not capable of restoring. In this case, the utilization of multimedia support is required by the nature of the documents themselves and aims to adhere more closely to historical reality and to the hypothetical friction context and allows to experiment techniques of interdisciplinary analysis. The main consequence um, or in all of the digital model of philological ed edition is thus, in simple terms, uh, the recovery of a uh, closer and more visible relationship uh, between text and manuscript sources and between the earliest reconstructable form of the text and the multiple evidences of its reception. The main problem that is shared both by medieval and contemporary digital offsprings is that this kind of edition needs uh, um, a collaboration between digital philologists and technicians uh, able to mediate between philology and, uh, and computing. Uh, so, uh, for example, this, uh, this uh, software, DBR, under 
a free license is now being used for other projects like the French-German Atelier on the hagiographical collection of Merovingian saints uh, directed by Monique Boulet and uh, in a an Hungarian project about European comparative metrics. Uh, it could be an example of an easy, even if uh, uh, old-fashioned software that is uh, pro proprietary but freely usable for scholarly purposes uh, and yet it will, I, I am afraid it will be soon outdated by the necessary free software policy that the European scholarly world requires. Other programs have been developed that are uh, open source policy compliance like the display system produced by the Ecole de Chartes uh, of Paris for editions of documents or Philologic of the Chicago University that has reached the beta release just a few days ago. But none of them is up, now, up to now able to manage complicated network uh, uh, of sources, text in philological edition and linguistic or metrical or musical data. So what we really need now is uh, uh, a free management software for text manuscripts and text or re related data, uh, operation system independent, but also encoding independent, I would dare to say, which can be compatible with the new philological model, so surpassing the old contraposition between reconstructive and source-based ed edition without accepting to be rejected in a new fascinating, smart, but marginal subfield of philological studies. Thank you for your patience.